Hey guys, this is Daniel and welcome to another video. There are a few more things that I wanted to show you and today's video is pretty awesome, I believe. It will be all about editing normals and there are two techniques in particular that I want to point out and teach you how to use. Basically, by using normal editing in Blender, you can change a result that looks like this here to something more like this, which is pretty awesome for this kind of style. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to reopen the scene and we will see what we can do. So this is where we stopped in the last video about texturing and setting up materials and let's just give it a try to and render it. So there you go. Pretty simple, looks good. But now what happens if I change the direction of the light source? Something like this maybe. Well, not so beautiful anymore. Now, what can we do about it? Well, there is something called normal editing. But first of all, uh, w what are normals about anyways? So basically, if you mold something, every face or vert vertex has a direction. I can show you that direction with these uh, bluish arrows and you have them on the, on the faces or on each vertex. In any case, these are the ones that more or less determine the color of the shading because depending on the, the angle towards the light source and such, uh, well, the, the shading is determined. So if we change the direction of these normals, um, we could also change the shading. One thing we could do is simply to change the the shape of the of the object, but that would be not good for different angles because that's really the shape that we wanted. So what we have to do is to use a normal modifier. Uh, well, not a normal modifier, but there are two modifiers that we can use here in this situation. One is normal edit and one is data transfer. Uh, let's take a look at the easier one first, normal edit. I'm not actually entirely sure whether this one was um, supposed to be used like this or not, but I found that it worked pretty well for what I wanted. So basically you can uh, you can have normals generated from a center and just, um, well, you will see the result. One thing you just have to keep in mind, which is very important, if you want to edit normals, here it gives you the, the error message, you need auto smooth enabled. And if you don't do that, nothing will work. So keep that in mind. If you edit normals, go to the editing tab and enable auto smooth. And see what happens now. I can go to shaded mode to give you a better idea. But the surface is now entirely, entirely smooth and almost like a sphere and that's exactly what's happening because we have the settings set to radial which means that it takes the object's center as a source so if I would change the object center to here maybe uh, it changed and from there it tries to um, well point the normals away from it I think that's how it works at least and you can also have here an object. I think it takes the position of the object instead. Let's give it a try. Well, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the only reason why we still have shading is because the light source actually has shadows, which are not affected, but uh, that's again a different topic. So you also have the choice of directional, but that's not really what we want here. Um, so yeah, that's the one thing which we, we are going to use for the hair parts. Uh, so here I've prepared it. We're just going to add here the modifier to the hair. And there you go. You have a smooth um, shading for the hair. If you want to mix it with the original, you can go ahead and change this value here and that's also something interesting to play around with if there's something in between that looks good maybe 
um, same thing for B here in the uh, in the back and then now for the face you are actually actually losing lots of control if you do that we're lucky because it's I mean the head is more or less a sphere it, it looks similar enough but there's more we can do about it so let's take a look at the uh, the other setting data transfer just one thing I want to check quickly yeah I was just wondering about the auto smooth thing anyways let's go back to the face and to the modifier so we need an object source basically what we're going to do here is we're going to transfer the normal da data from a separate object to the face so what we could do is copy the face and use the same mesh as a reference and then deform the mesh uh, which well let's give it a try quickly so it was this object here we want to use face corner that I think and then custom normals here and then if you go to the other, the other object again and start to change it um, I'm just going to make it better visible all right if you change it now and then go to object mode you'll see that that affected the shading a lot you can hide it and disable it basically it takes what the the new object would be shaded like and tries to pro project it onto the original mesh but that kind of didn't work out so well for this case actually what I th found was working well was just to start with the sphere again and let's give it somewhat a high resolution and smooth I'm going to place it within the head and let's try to copy the data from that sphere so because this is now a mesh we can be much more creative and actually deform it move it and such and you see already how I, I, I place it up in the head, not not here in the middle, and by doing so I, I shifted the line here. And now we can line it up and once we render it, we get a pretty good result here. Uh, of course you want to be careful with the layers, uh, move it to a layer where you won't see it, like the one below. But there you go. and. One more thing that you might want to look at is um, uh, this setting here, the way how it chooses the data. Um, you might get some shaky lines here, so you might want to go to nearest face interpolator that makes it a little bit better. And also be prepared for differences in the render and the preview it's not the same this is just a representation but anyways the result is a lot better from what we had at the beginning and all that just thanks to normal editing and i think if you if you're trying to achieve um like anime style models and renderings in blender this is definitely a feature that you will want to use so give it a try, play around with it and maybe share your results if you want to. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's video as well. See you next time.